everybody. Welcome to today's presentation. I'm Dana Crawford and I'm here with Wayne Tuscola. He began his antiques career selling antiques and collectibles in central Massachusetts shops, the Brimfield Antique Show, and other local shows during the 1980s. He operated his own shop during the 1990s and became a full-time auctioneer and appraiser 20 years ago. He currently writes a newspaper column on antiques and collectibles. Wayne holds the GPPA appraiser certification from the National Auctioneers Association. He also teaches the Evaluating Your Antiques class for adults. It's an adult education program. And he's been a collectibles appraiser on the Antiques Roadshow. So we're very happy to have him with us today. So take it away, Wayne. Thank you. Well, th thank you very much, Dana. I uh, thank you and Worth Point for inviting me to present today. And I'd like to welcome everybody who's watching. And uh, today's topic is don't give away your collectibles, get the most for your estate contents. As Dana mentioned, I'm Wayne Tuscola. I'm an auctioneer and appraiser here at Central Mass Auctions with offices in Boston and Worcester. And we'll get started right away with the uh, webinar topics. First one is what can you do with your personal property when you're aging? Uh, how to determine what you can uh, how to determine what you can throw away when you're handling an estate? What kind of things are selling well and what aren't in the current market? Should you get an appraisal? Should you call an auctioneer, a state sale company, or a cleanout company? If you decide on an auctioneer, is a live auction or online auction better? And how to choose the right company to help you? So the first thing is what to do while you're aging before there is an estate, and consider gifting items to family members. I'm not a financial planner, but I did a little quick research and uh, I saw an article in the Boston Globe from 2014 that said that people can gift up to $14,000 worth of value and there are no tax consequences for that. But more importantly, you're going to pass along things that are going to be cherished by other family members and, and maybe pa passed along continually through your family. And you get the, the rewarding experience of sh sharing something with someone who really appreciates it and getting to see their face when you give that to them. So, so uh, it's often good to give things ahead of time and um, uh, do that before there is an estate. But so when there actually is an estate, uh, what I recommend is first, before doing anything, secure the home, because we've been in situations where there are family members who felt that they uh, deserve some of the things in the home and they wanted to try to get inside and get those things. There are also people who may not be family members who want to break into a home. They see an unoccupied house. So do whatever you can to secure it. Uh, put you maybe you want to change the locks in the door. You, you might want to get uh, better lighting, uh, cameras, or an alarm system. And, and another thing that you can do is if there are valuables in there that are smaller things that, uh, such as jewelry, maybe you can consult with the attorney you're working with and maybe you want to take those out and put them somewhere secure and get them out of the house. All right, so what, what can you throw away? Uh, Things that are definitely trash, old food and beverages, uh, empty wrappers, things like that. But anything else, I would check with the company that will be hand handling selling your property because um, there are things that people think aren't valuable sometimes and end up getting thrown away in the trash. I've, I've uh, seen people start to throw away old postcards that had some value. And so uh, I would leave it to the experts when throwing things away. Just things that you know for sure are trash. And the, the market for collectibles and home furnishings and antiques has changed a great deal. I've been doing this for uh, 30 years, over 30 years, uh, at least part time, and things have changed a great deal. And uh, there's an article in Forbes which explains the situation now. It's, it's, you see it, it says nobody Sorry, nobody wants your parents' stuff. And unfortunately, with a lot of antiques, collectibles, and home furnishings, that's the case now. So we'll point out a few of those. Brown furniture is uh, something that's just not selling well. You see the uh, photos of the uh, dressers on the left-hand side. And um, so that beautiful mahogany bedroom set that somebody bought in the 50s or 60s just doesn't have the value anymore that it used, used to have. When I started doing this, P. 
people would like to buy good quality secondhand furniture, it was built well, they could expect that it'd be passed on to future generations and that it would be, the furniture was sturdy, made well. But now um, people's styles have changed. And another thing that's impacting this is that uh, there are a lot of decedent estates and a lot of um, uh, people who are downsizing. So there's just such a supply, huge supply that's coming out and very few buyers. It's just uh, uh, supply and demand. And unfortunately, it's caused uh, furniture prices to drop. Uh, glassware in China is another example. Um, we could, a lot of houses might people collected teacups or teapots and they just don't have the value. People don't want to hold on to things like that anymore. Uh, last thing is Hummel, collector plates, many other collectibles like that. Don't, I used to uh, attend auctions um, 25 years ago. Hummels might sell for 50, sometimes $100 each. And now we don't offer them at all at our auctions. But when I see them at our auctions, they might go in a tray lot 10 for 100. So things have changed, but, but that's the bad news out of the way. And we'll talk about some of the things that are selling well. Estate jewelry is doing particularly well, especially vintage pieces and antique pieces. If it's uh, gold, platinum, you have gemstones with diamonds and other uh, types of gemstones, those sell particularly well. Sterling silver, even though um, people aren't eating formally, is having formal dinners as much as they used to, it still, still sells well. It has the silver value, which sterling is 92.5% pure silver. So even a kind of a plain set is gonna be worth at least that, but the one in the photograph is more ornate and more desirable. And it's gonna be worth much more than the silver content and uh, alone. And coins also um, have silver content if they're in 1964 and before, Dimes, quarters, half dollars, and silver dollars, they're gonna be 90% silver. But they could be worth a lot more than the silver. There are some uh, new, coins that have numismatic value, which is valued to collectors. And uh, they could be a rare date, could be uh, just a, a better coin that's in much better condition, and they're gonna be worth well over the silver value. And uh, gold coins are also desirable. Other old coins, um, especially older ones, early 1800s somewhere can have value that's well above the silver content. Paintings by listed artists are another thing that's selling well, especially antique uh, older pieces like the one in the lower left hand corner is an oil on canvas of a couple of ships by a Canadian artist that we sold at our auction that did very well. And, and you can do a little research on some of these things yourself. You can uh, go to um, guides like Davenport's, or you can go on the web and sign up to uh, uh, look on databases and find uh, paint, painting uh, listed artists and what their paintings sold for. And, and I should also point out that um, other than paintings, you can look up things. You can worth points a good tool to go online and uh, look up some of the values on items that you may have, like uh, sports memorabilia that the a uh, picture you're seeing is, uh, is was a uh, wire photo from the 1920s with some baseball greats, including, including Babe Ruth. And so sports memorabilia, um, we handle primarily 1960s and earlier, sells uh, very well. Uh, old comic books are, uh, can be pretty desirable. This is a, um, a number one issue of the Hulk. And uh, often I find that people are surprised by some of the values because they are highly collectible. This uh, Hulk, even though it was in fair condition, was, um, wasn't very good copy at all, brought $4,500 at our last live auction. Uh, vintage posters are can be desirable. This, this one from the late 1800s, it was the arts and crafts period, and um, it was an advertisement for Harper's Weekly showing a woman golfer, but they, they don't even have to be that old, some 1930s, 1940s posters for advertising movies or travel can bring a, lot, uh, bring a lot of money at auction. Advertising signs like the tin Coke sign are very popular with collectors. Um, also folk art pieces, so things like uh, old duck decoys, car, uh, game boards, 
from the 19th century. And this happens to be an old uh, barber pole advertising haircuts, shaves, and hot baths that was all hand carved and painted. Um, things like that are all very popular with collectors. Uh, another thing that uh, sells very well are antique and classic cars like these the 1940s Chrysler Saratoga and the 1969 Volkswagen Beetle we sold uh, sold particularly well. And um, last thing I'll mention is historical memorabilia. If you have a letter or documents signed by George Washington, Abraham Lincoln, someone famous, it's going to be valuable. But even uh, more modern ones, uh, not exactly modern, but this is nearly less than 100 years old, the uh, Elliott Ness credentials. We, we um, had two pair that we auctioned after I appraised them on the Antiques Roadshow. And the pair, along with some other documents, brought $46,000. So uh, question is, should you get an appraisal when you have an estate? And there are reasons to get it. One is if uh, you're dealing with a taxable estate, your attorney may tell you that uh, you should get, get one for IRS and probate purposes. Um, also, if you want to equitably distribute assets among heirs, that's a good reason to get an appraisal. You want to make sure that uh, everybody who's dividing everything is getting a fair amount so you can find out the price of the things and make sure everybody's getting, again, their fair share. Um, you can also, you may also not uh, want to auction things or run an estate sale. You may want to sell things on your own or maybe even run your own estate sale. So you can plan to sell valuable items on your own and have an appraiser evaluate them for you. But you may not need an appraisal. You may uh, want to just rely on the company you hire to sell your items. If um, it's an estate sale, they'll, uh, and they've been in business for a while and they're uh, good at their job, they'll, uh, properly price everything and, and if you're it's an auction and uh, they promote things and get competitive bidding to drive things to the fair market value for your items so an appraisal may not be necessary for you so if you do decide to hire an auctioneer state sale or clean out company uh, here's some things to keep in mind the services vary by region um, we're here in massachusetts there's a lot of, it's a pretty historic area. There are a lot of uh, auctioneers who mainly specialize in antiques and collectibles, but um, there, there are some who do household items as well. But I, I've uh, met with people from auctioneers from other areas of the country. One I spoke with from Virginia said that they take everything out of an estate, whether it's glassware, china, they pack it all, but bring it in their truck and have a weekly auction. So pretty much everything in an estate uh, would go to auction, whereas, again, that's not the case here. When you, when you are getting ready to hire someone, check with family members and friends who have been through that before, and maybe they have some recommendations. Also, if you have antiques, valuable collections, classic cars, or other rare, rare items, uh, I advise you to go to auction with those. That's a good way of, of making sure you expand your clientele and it's you're not just offering them for two days in a state sale. They're going to be promoted on the web for a longer time and give uh, people who collect those type of things the opportunity to buy them at auction. Um, again, when you're looking for companies, personal references are best, but also check the online company reviews. You can check to see if the company is licensed, bonded, and insured. And that's not required everywhere. You need to be licensed and bonded in Massachusetts, but um, a, a, for it to be an auctioneer, but a state sale companies may not need any of those requirements and uh, companies in different states may not need to be licensed. So you can just check with your uh, check locally and see what the rules are and make sure that um, company you hire is following the regulations. Um, another thing to do is attend an auction or a state sale by the company considering using because there are a company, some companies are better than others. They're going to merchant, uh, an estate sale company may merchandise things better than another company. They're going to uh, have it displayed nicer. Some may just leave things in place. They see that things are tagged. If you're uh, going to check auctions, see that the company uh, is getting good prices for their things. And just make sure that you're a good fit when, when you talk with the people that um, it looks like a good company for you. And um, an estate sale, in, in my opinion, may be a better option for more contemporary items. And again, that's uh, locally here and you know, could vary where you are, but um, we, we find that estate sales work better in that situation. 
So if, if you do decide to go uh, by uh, with an auction, uh, should you go with a live one or an online? And uh, here are some of the pros to doing live auctions. Online auctions are gaining in popularity, but many bidders prefer live auctions. Items can be viewed in person. People can pick them up, inspect them. They may bring magnifying glasses. They may sometimes people weigh uh, silver or gold, that type of thing. So a lot of people like to, to be able to see things in person. Uh, a lot of people don't like to register online. Uh, some people don't, just don't like to give out their credit card information. Things are pretty secure now, but there's still some people feel that way. Uh, also, people don't want to pay for shipping. If, Sometimes um, it, at a live auction, winning bidders can take their items home the day they win them. They don't have to wait, they can just, uh, so, which is, appeals to some people. It's a quicker process typically for the auctioneer and the consigner. If you have a huge estate with 2,000 items, you're not going to be, uh, it's, it's going to be a longer process for the auctioneer because they have, to, uh, because the people can't inspect them personally, they have to do more describing. There has to be, there has to be better descriptions. There has to be more pictures and uh, it all has to be uploaded on the web. So, so it's a longer process. So live auction may pay you quicker. Also, in a lot of live auctions that have been running for a while, they got a good following of regular bidders plus the other additional bidders who show up uh, based on the type of merchandise they have that night. And online auctions, uh, some people prefer those, uh, rather bid online. And if someone's looking for a particular type of item, like I had someone call me yesterday who collected Moxie Soda advertising and something that might not come through a live auction for years, but if they're checking multiple auctions uh, through look, looking on a website where there are multiple live auction, uh, excuse me, online auctions, they can find typically find what they're looking for. And, and um, online auctions differ. We, we ran two different types recently on the same week. One was um, an auction of a lot of smaller things from multiple estates. So we had um, jewelry, silver, a lot of the things we showed you earlier, artwork, collectibles like baseball cards. And we uh, sold them um, uh, based in there. The auction was based out of our location. So everything was shipped from there. There was no, uh, nobody attended in person. Some people picked them up locally, but most everything was shipped. But there is also an online auction where things happen in the house. For instance, the, um, some of the pictures you're seeing there, these all happened on site in different locations. The uh, bed you see was part of a sale in Concord, Massachusetts. And so, so with an online auction, that bed might have been lot number one, the mirror behind it, number two, the pair of lamps, number three, and uh, they're all cataloged. People can bid online. It's a timed auction and things typically end a minute apart. And um, that's how that works. Uh, with some Most companies don't offer a preview, but we, we do typically a day so people can do a hands-on as well, which we think helps uh, in, increase the bidding. And um, so the, uh, there's number three states, the online estate auction combine, combines an auction and estate sale where it's done right in the house. And, and larger items can be sold and picked up by bidders. For instance, on the right-hand side, something that you don't encounter very often, that's a uh, World War II aircraft engine. And that was in one of the estates that we handled. And um, we it, that would have been pretty much, pretty close to impossible to move to an auction location. But the person who won it came and uh, picked it up, had a, uh, used a tractor that was there to lift it on their truck. And so, um, it's 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 uh, the logistics are a lot better sometimes with an online auction. Uh, items sell to local bidders and others from outside the area. That aircraft engine happened to go to um, someone along the uh, east coast, uh, several states away from us. But we had uh, people contacting us from as far as Australia who were interested in it. So the online au auction uh, gave them the opportunity to find that. Um, the also, the sell-through rate is very is high when starting bids are low, and that's what most online auction companies do. That's what we do. We'll start things typically at five dollars, and they'll sell for a fair price. Uh, 
everything you're seeing pictured there started at five dollars but the Harley Davidson uh, brought in the mid thousands you might expect and the aircraft engine brought over ten thousand but it's good for selling things that maybe aren't quite as valuable like the china and the glassware we could sell um, the contents of a cabinet full full of that and it helps uh, to get it sold and uh, a lot of times people who are handling estates need the house emptied out and that's a good way to do it the, you, the clean out costs are typically very low because the sell through rate is so high and uh, with, that's pretty much the end of the presentation. I'll say a quick thank you very much, everybody, for joining us. Uh, we really appreciate it. And Wayne, thanks so much for your expertise on this. I'd love to have you back another time. This was fun. Uh, thank you, Dana. Yeah, I've got some other ideas I can uh, run by, and uh, but I enjoyed it, and I uh, look forward to working with you some more. Okay. Very good. Well, have a great day, everybody, and watch for that follow-up email.